Hey guys, Woodruff here. So very grateful to be doing this lecture, <laughs> not stuck inside uh, in the ice capades of Texas in 2013. Up oh, to oh my god, 2023. This just shows that I need more sleep. Twenty. I wish it was 2013. That was actually the year that I graduated nursing. Um, so yeah, it would have been gives me a nice uh, 10 years <laughs> off uh, back on my life. But anyway. Let's get down to business. This is my long lecture over anemia, blood disorders, and blood transfusion. So this is the lecture that I have after my class, after our first exam. So uh, most people have to watch this because they're usually brain dead and not really paying attention in class. Um, but it's also here for those that just want to reinforce the content, et cetera. Um, so yeah, so let's, uh, and so this covers, um, we go into, um, general anemia. Um, we have also a plastic anemia, um, iron deficient anemia, polycythemia vera, and then blood transfusion. Um, so I'll probably break it up into small pieces, the general anemia, and then each of the different types of anemia as well um, to make it in more manageable bites. Um, but this is a lovely and I, I guess I should say like you know I wish there was some sort of music or introduction I could do to be like that da, 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 da. cardiac is here so this is the beginning of um, the start of your life where you get to finally experience cardiac and so if this is your um, first time delving into cardiac welcome the water's warm let's go all right, let's stop getting crazy. Okay, so first let's talk about general anemia um, and why we're talking about it. So anemia as a whole is where you have not enough, so like a low quantity, or you can have a quality problem with your red blood cells. Um, so anemia is a general term. There's a lot of different types of anemia. For anyone who has trouble with um, having a sufficient quantity of red blood cells and also good quality red blood cells, ones that can actually do their job, which part of their job, um, you know, is to work on um, carrying oxygen to the rest of the body. Um, so as I have here, the big problem here is, is that if I have not enough or good quality red blood cells, I can end up not oxygenating well. So when you think red blood cells, anemia, you should think about oxygen problems. Now, we're going to talk about other problems that can come up um, with them, um, you know, your blood cells and stuff like that, as we're talking about some other blood disorders, but usually anemia itself, just anemia as it is, we're mostly talking about oxygenation issues um, and issues with um, that kind of perfusion. Um, so why would someone be anemic? Now, like I said, there's a lot of different types of anemia, um, but people can be anemic from obvious reasons like, hey, um, their arm got cut off, car accident, um, bone fractures, things like that, where there's blood loss, like some sort of trauma, um, something happened for them to lose blood. I mean, you can also blo lose blood slowly through many different ways. Um, some, like I would say, common things that I see for blood loss in the hospital, I work in a trauma um, center. So, I mean, we see a lot of trauma uh, causes, but GI bleeding, um, if people had very severe or heavy menstrual bleeding, it could cause that. Um, if they had internal bleeding, um, uh, people have brain bleeds. A lot of times people that are on anticoagulation um, that are like long-term, which we'll talk about this, AFib, um, and that are on anticoagulation, um, they can end up having minor traumas or just from taking the anticoagulation um, are more at risk for uh, blood loss. And it doesn't have to be a quick thing. It could be over time. Anemia isn't always something that comes on quickly. It can be um, a slow, gradual process. So um, part of it could be, hey, I literally just don't have the supplies. I've lost, um, I've lost these red blood cells out of my body. Um, another issue could be impaired production. So there's some sort of issue in the production. Um, and that could be that I don't have the supplies, like I don't have the vitamins and nutrients that I need to make the red blood cells. Um, or there's something wrong with my body and its ability to produce red blood cells. Maybe my kidneys aren't working and so they're not sending the message to my bones to make more red blood cells, um, which we'll talk about that a little later. Um, the other thing could be increased destruction. So maybe if there's an issue, the spleen is um, kind of the, I was going to call it a succubus, but that's not really a good name for it. But it's the, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, kind of the breakdown um, organ. Many people don't talk about the spleen, but that's where all of your blood cells go to get destroyed. But sometimes with different processes in your body, you could also destroy more red blood cells. Um, you also, there's other, you know, autoimmune, other things that can happen where your blood cells can get broken down. 
Um, and then also it could happen from certain medications. It could happen from cancers, other things, cells can be lost. So it, there's a lot of causes, but a, a, effect, a lot of possibilities with destruction, but effectively I'm either losing blood from my body. So I literally don't have the cells. I'm not making enough or I'm losing too many too quickly. Um, it can be di uh, we can diagnose anemia off of a CBC, but what we usually have to do is what's called a reticulocyte count. And this allows us to kind of break down and start to see how many blood cells I'm making, um, baby blood cells and things like that. Um, and then also what's called a peripheral blood smear. Um, and so this can help us to see what type of anemia, like what's wrong, Are my, do I have enough red blood cells? It can tell me that. Um, it can also tell me what's up with the quality of my red blood cells. A peripheral blood smear can actually, they can look at the cells. Are they too big? Are they too small? Are they complete? Are they um, good blood cells? So they can look literally look under a microscope and see how your blood cells are doing. All right, so what does a patient with anemia look like? Um, it can differ. Um, based on the type of anemia, but in general, they're usually going to be pale, weak, tired, and short of breath. Like if you want to think of the picture as a whole, they're pale because literally red blood cells help give us some of the color. Um, it's like, think, um, you know, pale is a loss of perfusion. If I don't have my red blood cells, I'm not perfusing. Um, the being weak and tired, um, red blood cells give me oxygen. Oxygen's needed to bring energy to my cells and then therefore to allow my tissues to have what they need. And so I don't have have the um, energy supplies without my oxygenation. Um, and then short of breath, because like I mentioned, this all goes back to oxygenation. And so if I literally am low on oxygen, because I'm low on the transport, because that's what, um, you know, hemoglobin does is, is hemoglobin um, helps transport oxygen and drops it off in my tissues. If I'm low on that, um, those cells, those transporters, um, you know, it's kind of like, think of it like anything like Amazon delivery trucks. If we don't have enough drivers, no matter how many supplies there are, it doesn't matter. We can't drop them off. Um, so this patient can end up being more short of breath. Um, now the short of breath usually happens a little bit later. It's not usually the earliest symptom, but let's look more at this. So I don't want you to get too overwhelmed with this. Like you don't need to memorize this, um, anything like that. It's just good to know kind of in your head, what am I looking at when I'm looking at these labs? So so generally when we're looking at anemia, we're not checking someone's red blood cell level. Um, on Not at least at my school, there will be no test that I give that um, has to do with red blood cells because um, we don't really look at those that often. We might look at them a little bit. The, the lab we look at is hemoglobin because this is your oxygen carrying capacity. Regardless of what your RBCs are, your hemoglobin really gives a good idea of how much um, ability you have to drop off um, oxygen to your tissues. So mild anemia would be considered like a 10 to a 12 because it, it varies by gender. Um, but I would say like, if you can remember for normal hemoglobin 12 to 18, um, that's about what's normal. Um, so if you get below that 12, if you're at like 10 to 12, most of the time you're asymptomatic. I'll tell you about 95% you know, or more maybe of people in the hospital have a hemoglobin between 10 to 12. Does that mean they're anemic? Actually, no. A lot of times it's just diluted. We've given them a lot of fluids, things like that. Um, we really don't worry too much when it's up at this level, but per textbook, it is considered um, mild anemia. Um, they may have symptoms with exertion, but again, like most of the time, I am not calling a doctor. No one is replacing anything, doing anything for this hemoglobin um, that is um, 10 to 12. Um, what do you call it? Then there's moderate anemia, which is six to 10. Um, and so this is, you know, where we're just going to kind of keep an eye. I'll tell you, once my um, patient's hemoglobin, you know, is getting below eight, um, that's where I'm starting to think about, okay, let's keep an eye on this. Um, we usually only transfuse patients, at least in my experience, this is not the textbook answer, um, but, um, you know, this is kind of what we follow at my school too, is we usually only transfuse if a patient uh, has a hemoglobin less than seven. Um, and so usually if it's less than eight, I'm starting to kind of keep an eye on it, then it gets less than seven, then it's like, okay, they may need a transfusion. Um, and so if per our textbook, you know, less than six is what we consider some Severe anemia, where we're really going to start seeing those symptoms. So again, um, we're not going to ask you any test questions at my school about this, um, you know, in depth, but really want to be thinking about, okay, what does this tell me? Like overall, if I'm looking at these labs, like um, how severe is it most likely? Um, so kind of think that 10 to 12, they're good to go. Once we start getting, you know, back, um, you know, down like eight to 10, even usually okay. They might like, to, like if this was my list, I would say, um, you know, like pretty much, Mm, I would say um, maybe uh, 
nine to 12, you okay, mild? <laughs> and then um, uh, what do you call it? Um, I would say seven to, I want to say, did I say nine? Seven to nine is moderate and anything below seven is severe. Um, now, again, I've taken care of lots of patients with a hemoglobin less than seven and they're fine. I've taken, oh, I'm trying to think the lowest hemoglobin I've seen might be around four um um, four grams and so um yeah I want to say it was like four maybe three oh no it was pretty low um but um uh with hemoglobins uh like that low you are going to see more symptoms so really just translating okay like I think that as a student what I would would I would want to know and what I would want you to know as a nurse too from that perspective is just when are we going to transfuse which is less than seven and when are they going to start to have symptoms because otherwise you know again and I'll tell you when working with clinical students too um, I see a lot of students who will tell me like they're like oh my goodness they're anemic hemoglobin's 10.5 and, you know, it's like, yeah, no, like not so much. Like, um, so it's really starting to see how this translates into practice too. Cause there's always like kind of what you learn in nursing school and then real life. So I can't tell you what the NCLEX says about this, but this is why we have these more um, general standards to keep in mind. Um, but no, in actual practice, we don't really start worrying until it's less than eight, maybe less than seven. We start to transfuse and less than six, they are starting to get pretty sick and we need to start supporting them. So how do we know someone with anemia is getting better or worse? Um, so they're getting better if they're showing signs of less weakness or fatigue, like their symptoms are getting better. Um, if they're starting to show signs of better oxygenation, like less respiratory difficulty, like maybe they'll say, hey, I have less shortness of breath. Um, and maybe if their color is improving, becoming less pale. Because like with some patients, there's trauma patients I've had come in that are pale. I was going to say pale as a rail. Um, that might work, but maybe pale as this PowerPoint slide. And um, I'll tell you, it's not um, a pretty picture. And it's amazing what I'm um, getting, uh, you know, even transfusing a unit or two of blood can do for their uh, pale color. Um, getting worse, we look for change in level of consciousness. You know, my mind, um, my mind, my brain um, is not going to settle for no oxygenation. It will shut off if it's not getting what it needs. Um, so decreased level of consciousness. I would also worry about in, uh, look for it, like any sort of worsening respiratory effort or oxygenation issues. Um, and then also looking for, um, of course, signs that they're really low on volume because low blood cells could also be low volume. I could be losing blood. Um, so maybe decreased blood pressure or signs of shock because someone who is anemic, severely anemic, could go into like hypovolemic shock, depending on, of course, the cause of their um, anemia. So what are we going to do? Um, like medical treatments. Um, we also need to treat the cause because I can all day give blood transfusion, put on oxygen, but if I'm losing blood, I need to stop losing blood. Um, so if it's blood loss, we need to treat that. Um, if my body is not making good blood cells because I don't have the supplies, you can see here, um, I give vitamins. Um, if I, my body is not uh, making, um, like getting the signal to make more blood cells. I need more of that with, that's what's called erythropoietin. Um, so kind of starting at the top blood transfusions, if I'm missing blood and my blood, you know, levels get down to that, like less than seven, um, or so usually that's when I'll give a blood transfusion. Now I'm not saying that everyone who's anemic needs blood. Like it's, again, we can replace it all day long, but if we don't fix what's, what's going on, whether again, cause we kind of talked about it's either they're losing blood, their um, blood cells are no bueno, um, or they, um, like not good quality or they're, um, uh, not producing enough. Um, or producing enough good blood cells, or they're um, losing too many blood cells. So we always got to fix the problem at hand. Um, so vitamin supplementation. So you may not know this, but most of your blood cells are uh, made from a rich supply of uh, vitamins. So you definitely want to make sure to, um, you know, if it's a vitamin deficiency, that's the issue. We'll talk about iron deficient anemia next. Um, then we definitely want to um, get to the bottom of what is missing. Um, and then erythropoietin. So what happens, um, you know, is, is that the kidneys don't make blood cells, but the kidneys secrete a hormone known as EPO or erythropoietin. And, um, what it does is, uh, it pretty much, I consider it like the cheerleader. It goes and says like, rah, 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 not really. So don't take me literally. If English is not your first language, this is not literal, but this is just how my brain works. 
Um, you know, the EPO is like, raw, 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 like, and it tells, hey, bones, we need more blood cells. Let's make some more. And so then in the bone marrow where blood cells are made, um, EPO was to, like pretty much sends a signal, hey, we need more, you know, like, come on, you know, and like cheers on the bone to make some more blood cells. But if you're low on that, because you have kidney issues, then we need to get to the bottom of that. Um, and then other things we can do medically is um, treat the symptoms. So if they're having trouble oxygenating, we're going to apply oxygen per um, prescription or order as however you want to say that. And how about as the nurse? Um, as the nurse, I want to make sure to be doing frequent um, assessments like um, neurological assessments. It's going to tell me about perfusion, respiratory assessments to make sure it's really looking for complications of the anemia. Um, regular blood pressure checks, especially if I'm concerned about blood loss. Uh, I'm going to help them to manage their um, fatigue. So I'm going to encourage them to go between like they can, you know, move and do activities, but they should rest, um, have periods of rest and then periods of movement or other activity. Um, keep their head of bed elevated. That's going to help support a good breathing pattern and better um, oxygenation. Um, and then limiting blood loss is really important. So if I already have someone, whether their cause is blood loss or not, if I already have um, either a low number of hemoglobin, an issue with production or good quality, I don't want to be losing any more than I already might be losing in the first place. So you want to think about as the nurse, when do I cause patients to lose blood? So I mean, the big one, of course, is going to be blood draws. I try to limit blood draws. So let's say, for example, um, there's times that if I have a patient who's anemic, um, that in the past, and sometimes I've had patients who are anemic who are like Jehovah's Witnesses, and they don't want to receive any blood products. So sometimes what I do there is when I do collect labs, I take, I get a PD tube or a pediatric tube. Um, and this is all, you know, coordinated with the lab. Um, they set me up a special tube where I only have to get a few drops of blood so I don't have to waste so much of their blood. Um, the other thing is, is grouping stuff together. So there's sometimes like I'll draw labs on a patient and then like an hour later, the doctor's like, oh, I want some more. And it's not a color tube that I already sent down. So sometimes I'll ask them, hey, can this wait till, you know, the next time we're going to draw or I'll see how we can, um, so I, I can avoid sticking them and avoid them losing more blood. Um, cause even sometimes like, let's say that I don't have, it's not even about sticking them. Let's say that I have a central line or something else. I usually have to waste so much blood while I'm drawing that. And, um, we definitely don't want to waste any uh, additional blood if we can help it. Um, and then other things we could do to limit blood lo lo loss is anything we want to like kind of like bleeding precautions. We don't want them to have any falls. We don't want them to, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, be avoiding. We want them to avoid injury. So like, um, like fall precautions, bed alarm, yellow socks, all that stuff, the wristband um, to make sure that they don't fall. Um, and then uh, we got any way that we can uh, make sure like with our care in general that we're not being rough with them, you know, make sure they're using a soft bristle toothbrush. Um, if they're shaving that they're using an electric razor to avoid um, cuts or other nicks. Um, and then, yeah, any procedures or other things, avoiding any sort of incisions that might lead to blood loss or cuts, things like that. So anyway, those are just a few off the top of my head. Um, education as a whole for just in general for anemia is to teach them about diet and lifestyle changes. And all that's going to depend on the type of anemia. Um, for my school, my class, you're only responsible to know about iron deficient anemia and um, aplastic anemia. And then we also learn about polycythemia vera, um, which is not an anemia, but it's a, um, it's a type of blood disorder. And, um, you know, those are the three that you'll have to know about. So don't go digging deep into all the different types of macrocytic, microcytic anemia, et cetera. And then, um, yeah, just general medica medication education, depending on their type of anemia and compliance to prevent issues. Um, but yeah, we'll talk more about this as we get into individual types of anemia. I'll see you for the next one.